Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be discussing trailing stop losses, which is a feature that was recently added to the Alpaca Trade API. So let's say you're like me, and a few days ago, um, on the evening of November 11th, I continued to like this NIO stock, which we've been talking about since the uh, low 30s. Uh, I decide to enter this stock again. So you can see I'm in this paper trading account. And November 11th, uh, I entered this market order in for NIO so that it would just buy at the open uh, the next morning and just uh, follow that momentum, right? And so you can see uh, this order filled at 45.50, uh, which was great because if you followed NIO, you can see uh, on the morning of November 11th, uh, it gapped up, I got the fill, and it kept running till to uh, 48, right? And then if you check the next day, it gapped up again and went to 54. So uh, 45 to 54, so that's like a $9, like a 20% move that happened in, 24, in a 24 hour period, which is amazing, right? But then what happened after that? You'll see that NIO sold off just as quickly as it went up. Uh, it went down from 54 to what, like 42? Um, oh, all the way down to 41 in, in less than a day, in just a matter of hours. So you can see where I didn't set a trailing stop and didn't know how to properly set a, a stop loss here. And you can see how this gain, um, when this account was up by uh, $3,000, um, at in the morning, uh, it quickly wiped out the entirety of the gain and retraced all the way back down to 100 grand, which is break even. So you can see this NIO position, although uh, I picked a great winner, right? That ran from 45 to 54, which is amazing. That that gain can be wiped out in a few hours if you're not uh, paying attention. So uh, the important thing is to not have to pay attention to this and to manage your risk properly, which is where the trailing stop loss uh, comes into play. Now, I hadn't actually used this feature of the Alpaca Trade API before because it only uh, came out uh, in September. And so I'm just trying this for the first time. And so the idea here with the trailing stop, as I'm sure as many of you know, uh, you can have a stop loss that isn't fixed so it can follow um, the price of your stock up. So the trades we've taken so far on the opening range breakout strategy, uh, we were setting the stop loss and the uh, take profit price in advance, right? Uh, in, in, in the form of a bracket order. And so um, we were just exiting our, our positions quickly with, with a, a fixed target price. And we we're also exiting with a, a fixed uh, stop loss. Um, but what the trailing stop loss allows you to do is to let your stock run a bit. So uh, trading something like NIO, if you just take a 25 cent or 50 cent uh, profit, um, that's not very good, right? You're catching this explosive move of 20%. So you wanna give it a bit of room to run, but also you want to protect in the event that it suddenly reverses and everyone decides to take profit at the same time and goes through the exit door, right? So the important concept to understand here is the concept of the high watermark. And so let's say I bought my NIO stock and I entered the position and it filled at $45 a share. At that point, the high water mark is $45 a share. Now I can enter in a, a trailing stop loss order. So I would enter a sell order and say, I want a trailing stop that's either, uh, you can either specify a trailing percent or a trailing price. And so if, if NIO, if the high water mark is at $45, and I enter in a trailing stop dollar amount of $5, then uh, the stop my stop loss is set at $40, right? And then if NIO uh, continues upward to, to $50 a share, then my stop loss is automatically moved up, so it trails behind that high watermark, and so my stop loss is moved up to 45. If NIO goes to 55, my stop loss becomes 50, and so forth. Likewise, if I set a trailing percent, uh, as my stop loss. So if uh, NIO, if I'm in at 45, I enter in a sell, a trailing stop sell order with a, a trailing stop percent of 10%, then 10% of 45 is 450. So my stop loss becomes uh, at $40 and 50 cents. And if it rises up to uh, 60, for instance, then my stop is moved up to 54. And so you can see how the price, the high water mark keeps going up, but as soon as it falls back down from that previous high, uh, you get stopped out uh, with that moving trailing stop, right? And so this, this is just showing how 
uh, your the stock price goes up and then it hits this high point and then you have this trailing stop behind it and then it falls back and you can get stopped out. So you can see where a trailing stop would have been useful with a stock like NIO, right? Because you could have entered the trade, uh, let this thing really run and move, but also had a trailing stop loss following that up and then maybe you wouldn't have gotten stopped out until this huge move down and then we would have locked in some of these profits rather than letting them all disappear, right? So it's very important to uh, manage your risk and also be able to let your stocks run when necessary to maximize the amount of profit you get. So how do we go about executing a trailing stop order using Python and the Alpaca Trade API? So I tried this out for the first time uh, on Friday morning. I scheduled some market buy orders for some index ETFs and also scheduled um, some, some trailing stop orders just to observe how it works because I'd never actually used this functionality before. And so we'll check out what happened in a moment, but let's go ahead and talk about what the code looks like for that. And so I have a new script here called trailingstop.py that I created and starting from scratch. And what we'll do is we'll import our config, which we already have our Alpaca um, API key in there and our secret key and other config information. And then I'm also going to import uh, Alpaca trade API as trade API. And that way uh, we can instantiate uh, a, a, an Alpaca API client. And so I'm gonna copy this from another file since we've already done this a couple times before. So we have API equals trade API.rest, and then we use our API key, secret key, and our API URL right here. And so now I have access to the, to the Alpaca Trade API. And then what I did was I just created a list of symbols to try this out with. So I used SPY, IWM, and DIA, which is just S&P 500, Russell 2000, and the Dow Jones uh, ETFs right here, right? And then I did for symbol and symbols, and then for each of these, I just entered into a market buy order for a um, around a $10,000 position. And so let me show you what that code looks like. And so uh, I just submitted an order for each symbol, side by type market, and then we used our calculate quantity function. So uh, from our helpers that we wrote in the last video, if you followed along, for from helpers import a calculate quantity, and that just calculates a roughly $10,000 position, and we just give it the price that we're gonna use. And so I just got the most recent uh, price by getting a quote using the trade API. So I did API get last quote for whatever symbol I was on as we're looping through. And then we can just calculate a roughly $10,000 position by dividing uh, 10,000 by the price and then rounding that down. And so we get an even number of shares, right? And so I'm executing that buy order and then just said time enforces day. And so this, I just ran this and then it submitted an order first thing in the morning and entered some positions. And so if I check my Alpaca account, you'll see where um, I entered in some uh, market buys here. And so I did that for SPY, DIA, and IWM right here, right? And you can see it calculated 28 shares at 356, 33 shares at 294, 57 shares at 172. So roughly around $10,000 positions uh, for each of those. So that's step one. We need to actually submit our buy orders and we need to verify that our orders have filled and that we're actually in the positions because we don't wanna actually submit a trailing stop sell order until we actually own the positions already. So if you wanna verify you own the positions or verify your order status, you can do api.list orders right and then just make sure that your order is filled so i can do orders equals api.list orders or i can do positions equals api.list positions and i can look through those and see my fill price the order status and i can also verify i'm in the position so once i've verified that my orders are filled and that i'm in the position at that point i will enter a trailing stop sell order um, on each of my symbols and so to do that i just submit another order so i do api.submit order I just give it a symbol. So I did one for uh, IWM, for instance, and you do side sell. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to sell to exit my position and then I give it a quantity. And so I have uh, 57 shares of IWM. And so I can use the number 57. Obviously, since I'm calling orders and positions, um, I can get the current number of shares I have. And let's say I don't wanna sell all of them. I can get uh, the quantity that I own in positions and say, uh, take off half my position, for instance, so I could take that quantity and divide by two. So maybe I wanna set one stop uh, for half the position, let the rest run, and then set another cell to uh, 
give it give the other half a little bit more room to run right so sometimes you want to take partial profits and then let it run a little bit further so you can divide up your sell order uh, however you want here okay and so i'm going to do time and force equals day or you can change that however you want and then the important part here that's different is you do type equals trailing stop and so you can give it a, a trail percent so i can do trail percent or i can do a trail price and so what i did was a trail price of 20 cents. So let's see what happens if you did a trailing stop of 20 cents here for IWM. So IWM, when that order was submitted, got as high as 172.49, uh, and you can see it fell back here. And since the trailing stop was only 20 cents, then I got stopped out at 172.29. So you can see where that trailing stop order wasn't very good, right? Because it was way too close. It trailed way too close to the high water mark there. And so just this small move right here, even though it was like a dollar, I got stopped out really quickly for a 20 cent loss. But then you see the stock continued to run until the end of the day. And so I got stopped out way too quickly. So that's an example of setting a trailing stop but setting the trailing stop too tight. So I submitted a couple of different combinations of this. So you can see for DIA, I submitted a trailing stop sell with a trail percent of 0.7%. So to do a trailing percent stop loss, you can just do this. So you just copy that. And then I could do the symbol is DIA side sell quantity. And I did a quantity less than the total amount I had, just five shares. And then I did, instead of a trailing price, you just do trail percent and you can just do 0.7 like that. And so I set a trailing percent of 0.7 and said sell five shares. So I saved the response from this order I entered. So the trail percent was 0.7 and then that set the stop price to 292.32 uh, initially. And so if we look at the chart for Dow for uh, November 13th, you can see how uh, the order entered filled around here, but then there was a trailing stop and you can see how it went down at first and it went down to like 292.45 ish or so. So I almost got stopped out because the uh, stop price was 292.32, but did not quite get stopped out. And then it continued to run through the end of the day to in the Dow close over 29,500, which in this case, I did not get stopped out. And you can see the position is still open and still profitable. All right, and then the third uh, type of order I submitted was for SPY which is a trailing stop sell with a trailing percent of 0.5%, which is a little closer than 0.7%. And I said a sell half of it. So the initial position you'll remember is 28. And so I said sell uh, only half of the position, right? With a trailing percent stop of 0.5%. And so what you see happened here is it actually uh, sold those 14 shares. It actually filled. And so now you can see how uh, I took partial profit, right? So it went from just a small amount, 356.64, almost negligible profit. So locked it in real quick, a little bit of profit, and then I still have half of the shares and can let those run if needed, right? And so that's a few different combinations of how uh, you can enter in a trailing stop price and a trailing stop percent to either sell all or part of your position. And it's important not to set your trailing stop loss too close or you can get shaken out or stopped out of your position uh, really quickly, right? Because that's just a little small fluctuation can stop you out. And so one last thing I wanted to touch upon briefly is that some people use the ATR or average true range for a trailing stop. And so there's a bunch of articles on different ways people use this to calculate uh, their stop loss. But on um, NIO, for instance, on this chart, uh, since we have the tra trading view indicators built in here, uh, I can just do average true range. And so you can see at the bottom of the chart here, I've added the ATR indicator to uh, this daily chart for NIO. And this is just a calculation of the volatility by looking at the true range or how much the stock moved each day, uh, an average of that over the past uh, 14 days from high to low. And this is just a measure of volatility. And so you can see how it was moving roughly, you know, a dollar, dollar fifty a day. And you can see it actually wasn't that volatile back in September, but you can see as of the end of October and November how the volatility increased uh, with this huge move. So it's making huge moves per day with these large candlesticks right here. So the range here is really big. And so what you can do is use this ATR value, this average true range to set the trailing stop uh, for your stock. 
And so to calculate the average true range, you can just, since we've been using the uh, tulip indicators, uh, we can just import uh, tulip pie, right? And that's one of the indicators that's built in. So if I look at tulip indicators, you can see that uh, ATR here is one of the indicators and you just need to pass it uh, a few inputs. You pass it, uh, I believe it's the high, low, and the close. Yeah, the high, low, and the close. And so, so I imported uh, tulip pie and then let's just give it a symbol. And so let's, I'm gonna comment all this stuff out and I'm just gonna get the price bars for NIO for, for the daily. So I've imported a tulip pie for my tulip indicators and I already have the uh, Alpaca trade API instantiated here. And so what I can do is api.polygon, I can just get the daily bars or whatever time frame I want uh, for any stock. And so I'll do api.polygon.historic ag2 and we'll do that for NIO. And I can just get uh, the daily bars and I can do from equals and then let's just get the daily bars for October and November. So I'll do 2020, 10, 01, and I'll do two equals uh, 2020, 11, and what's today? Uh, so we can do it for the 13th, right? And so we'll get the daily bars, right, by calling a polygon again. And then I'll just print the daily bars to make sure I have them, right? So make sure that works. Okay, so you can see I have the OHLC data for each day here for NIO stock. And then all I need to do is use tulipi. So I can do ATR equals tulipi.atr. And then I have my autocomplete. So you can see I just need the high, low, close, and the period. And so I'll just get the high, low, and close, and the period of these daily bars. And I forgot I need to actually, I, I do dot DF here to get a data frame. And so let me print the daily bars again as a data frame. Okay, so there's my daily bars for uh, NIO. So you can see how it was like, not too long ago, it was like $20 a share. And then it went as high as $54 a share on the 13th before falling to a low of $40. So you can see how the range expanded over time here. Okay, and so I'll just do ATR equals tulipi.atr and I need the high, low, close in the period. So I'll do daily bars dot, uh, val dot high dot values, daily bar dot uh, low dot values, daily bar bars dot close dot values, and then I need a period, which I'll just use the default of 14. So daily bars dot low dot value. Okay, cool. And so that should return the ATR values. So I can print an ATR like that. And then let's see if we get it. Right, and so you see we have this array of ATR values, and then you can kind of compare that to what's uh, in trading view here. So you can see, let's see, um, most recently it looks like it was like almost four or 405, right? 405, 331, 308, 297, 441, yeah. So that looks pretty accurate, so that looks, that looks good. And so the day that we entered the trade, we could use uh, the ATR there of what, 308? Right, and so you can see if uh, maybe I use that as the trailing stop uh, for when I entered the trade on uh, November 11th or November 12th, um, how I could have let this run and given it like a $3 stop here and let it really move and then get stopped out with a $3 uh, trailing stop loss from 54 and maybe locked in a uh, stop price at 51 and got stopped out and got some profits. So, and so that's it. I just wanted to talk about this new feature of the Alpaca Trade API and how it can be used to let our stocks uh, run and let our profits run for a bit and then set this trailing stop to uh, lock in our profits without giving it all back up. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.